What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the updated version of one of my favorite add-ons for Blender, Procedural Crowds. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, thanks to the guys over at Diffuse Studio for sending over a copy of this so that I can check this out. This is a really interesting new add-on or updated add-on for Blender. All right, so we've talked about procedural crowds in the past. It's a really easy way to create and add crowds inside of Blender. And so specifically what they've done in this case is they have the original version still available, but they've also rolled out a pro version that has some additional features, some additional crowds, other things like that. So you can download procedural crowds at the cgessentials.com slash procedural crowds. That'll bring you to this page. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do end up purchasing through that link, I do receive a commission. So if you scroll down the page a little bit, there is a comparison between the original version and the pro version. I guess it's probably about three quarters of the way down the page, um, but notice how um, it's got kind of a comparison of what's in here. And notice the pro version um, contains things like the teams that they've just added as, as well as some things having to do with replacing individual models other things like that so let's jump over into blender and take a look at the way that this works so, all right, so I'm gonna show you how to install this in Blender 4.2. This might look a little bit different depending on the version that you're using, um, but if you go to Edit Preferences, remember that this is still an add-on, it's not a uh, extension. So we wanna to go to Add-ons, and remember they changed this a little bit in 4.2, so now if you click on the little drop down, there's an option for install from disk. And so in this case, I wanna find the Procedural Crowds Pro and install it from disk. So when we do that, that's going to install this in Blender and it's gonna give us the ability to select an asset folder. If you don't select the asset folder, this isn't gonna show up properly and it's not going to work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go find those asset files and what you need to do is you need to unzip the zip file that was in here um, and then you can double click on it and you wanna double click again and click on accept. What that's gonna do is that's going to tell this where to look for the assets for Procedural Crowds Pro. Once you've done that, you can close out of your preferences and you can tap the in letter key. Notice how it's gonna say Crowds Pro on the right hand side over here. And you're gonna have options for your different crowd types in here. And it's got all of the crowd types that you originally had, right? So you can do a mix of men and women, you can do men, you can do um, different animations and you can add that crowd. So if I click on add crowd, that's going to add in and we'll go to material preview mode so you can see this. And so notice how now we've got a crowd in here like this. And they currently have the audience animation applied to them. But then once you have the crowd applied, you can click on the little drop down right here. Notice how all the different settings are gonna be in here. So things like your crowd settings, for example, things like the width, of the crowd, the thickness of the group of people, as well as the personal space, the people scale, so you can make them bigger, smaller, uh, the probability that people are gonna show up, other things like that. You can also adjust the seed in order for some more randomization in here like this. And so that's something that was already in procedural crowds. If you guys want me to make a follow-up on that, I definitely can. It's been a minute since I've talked about that. But specifically, I wanna focus on some of the things that you can do in the pro version. All right, so first off, there's some minor changes in here um, that were kind of necessary so that um, you could use some of the functionality having to do with working with individual models. So um, if I add a crowd right here, and so what's happening is these objects are being basically placed on a vertex. Well, notice how if you adjust the width up like this, right now it's not really adding people in there. And so what that means is that means that you need to come in here and when we adjust our thickness, you just need to click on the button for update crowd count. Notice how that's going to bring in more people like this. So that update crowd count button when you make changes is going to be important in order to get this to um, show all of the people that you need it to do. Now, this is important because we now have the ability by tabbing into edit mode, notice how there's an option here for advanced. If we tab into edit mode and we select these different vertices, what this is gonna do is this is going to let us adjust um, just those models in here like this. So notice how I can adjust the rotation, other things like that of just selected models. You can also come in here and randomize those models. So you can pick just 
individual models in here and make those changes and adjustments just like this. So if you have a part or piece of this that you don't like, you can go in and change that using this new setup, which is pretty cool. And so you can also, and again, remember this needs to be in edit mode, um, and I'm going to make sure that I've updated my crowd count in here, but say we were to pick up a couple of the vertices in here like this, so maybe you wanted to change one of these models, maybe this one right here. So we're gonna pick up or these two models. Notice how you can also pick a model like this in order to adjust it. So what that means is that means if you accidentally had two of the same model in the front right here, so kind of like this one right here, I can go through and I can change or adjust that um, in order to have um, whatever characters that I want. You can also pick individual characters and adjust and rotate them, which is something that you couldn't do before. You were just kind of stuck with the crowd settings. So you now have the ability to adjust individual models that have been generated by this add-on. All right, so next up, we've got complements. So what complements do, and this one's kind of interesting. Um, so the general usage, I think I've got figured out the other piece I need to look into a little bit more, but basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to um, add variations to a model. So if I click the option for enable random complements, then I adjust the probability up or down. Notice what this is doing is this is basically um, randomizing colors of different parts of these models. So um, basically what that means is that means notice how the colors are kind of changing and adjusting in here and you can adjust the seed like this, but you can use this in order to set parts of your model so that you're not going to get characters with the exact same colors in them. So for example, if I crank this all the way up, this all the way up, um, just so you can kind of see, notice how this model and this model have slightly different colors associated with them. Um, so it's kind of randomizing the clothing and other things in these models. Now, one thing I need to look into more is this also gives you the ability to assign a vertex group to parts of your mesh. So you can actually like pick out parts of a character's mesh, assign a vertex group, and then um, do different variations or randomizations of that. You can have up to two of them in your model, meaning you can use this to randomize things like towels or hats or other things like that. I think if you have their summer or casual models pack, I don't remember what it's called. Um, some of this is kind of built in so you can kind of see that a little bit more. Um, definitely very interesting. I've not gone through and quite figured this out yet, but if you go into their in-depth tutorial, on their YouTube channel, they kind of show you how it works. So they even talk about how selecting the part of the um, part of a mesh that you want, you can select it and assign it as a vertex group, which then makes it the random complement. So like I said, I've not gotten super in depth on this one yet, but um, just another way to kind of like add some variation to your models, which I think is really interesting. All right, so next up, we've got the new teams feature, which currently only works on the casual humans model group, um, which is what's gonna come along with this anyway. Um, but if we pick the stadium option, and I'm just gonna add a crowd to this mesh, you need to make sure you have the mesh selected before you do that. But when I add this crowd, first of all, note that um, that option for update vertices is really important or update crowd count. So if I bring that crowd separation down like this, notice how it's only doing it on part of my object. You need to scroll down and click on the option for update crowd count in order to get them to all show up. But um, the cool thing about this teams feature is you can come in here and you can check the box for team and then it's going to colorize the clothes of a team. So if your team colors are like red, right? Notice how this is going to come through and it's going to colorize um, all of the clothes to be more of that red color. So if you have a red team and you're creating a crowd in the background, um, this is going to basically colorize that whole thing. Now, notice how you can set the percentage, right? So you can set it to very high or very low, and it's going to change that. And then you can also adjust the seed for when that's going to happen. But you can use this in order to create those audience or that audience crowd scene in the background, just like this. And I probably should have set those to be um, with the stadium, but that's okay. Um, you can kind of see what this does. So being able to set up the team colorization is a pretty cool feature. All right, so we've also got a couple new crowd types. So one of them is the groups, which is really interesting. So if you click in here, you've got your groups and we click on add crowd and we're gonna set these to be probably idle for right here. We're gonna click on add crowd. Again, notice how you're gonna wanna go through and click on update crowd count in order to get this to show up 
properly. Um, it just has to do with the vertex positions right here. And so you can see how you can use this to set things like the separation between groups, but this is gonna come through here and it's going to create groups of people like this um, that are kind of standing around talking. So notice how you can adjust things like the amount of personal space, which makes this a little less groupy, um, but you can come through and adjust things like the deformation of the group. So if you bring the deformation of the groups up, they're not necessarily quite as, uh, quite as round, but you can use this in order to generate groups of people talking. And again, I'm gonna update my crowd count right here. Um, but we've got the ability to do that. Uh, I think, yeah, you can come in here and you can use the Teams feature as well on this. So you can use that to colorize these models. I think that's going to work on basically any group of models. But you've got the crowds function right here. You've also got a new crowd type, which is random paths. And so in this case, we're going to add a curve. So something like this, we can go into top down view. Um, I'm going to tab in edit mode and delete this, but then we'll just draw a curve in here. Then if we add a crowd, what it's going to do is it's going to create different variations of that path and create random paths around that. So notice how you can adjust things about the paths. So you can adjust the amount of randomization. You can adjust the number of paths that are added in here and the section lengths in here and the width in order to generate people running along paths. Now within our crowd, we're going to adjust our speed down a little bit, bump up our number of people. Make sure you click on the, the option for update crowd count. Again, that's very important. Uh, we'll bring that speed down even more like this. There we go. But we've got a number of people now running along these random paths. So you can use this to create this kind of like running animation. Um, now, if I look in here, I think they are, I can't tell actually. Yeah, it does look like they are kind of clipping through each other. So it's not doing any kind of like, a, I don't think it's doing collision detection in here, but I think the idea of this anyway is to have kind of like a further back view like this. So these aren't really designed to be close in animation models anyway. Um, but notice how these all still have those vertices in here. So if you go into your advanced, right, you can randomize just a certain number of models right here. You could also set them to be whatever you want. So I could set them to be all the same model if you wanted to, but even within the new crowd types, the randomization and model picking is still going to work. All right, so then we've also got a new simulation option. So what that's gonna do, and we're just gonna pick, um, we'll pick a mix right here and we'll pick walk animations. I'm gonna click on add crowd. And initially when you do this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna kind of drop them in your scene right? And so you need to reset your animation to the beginning, but it's not really going to do anything that you want quite yet. You need to click on the button for update crowd count, but then you also want to set your surface collection. So in this case, I've got a collection with just a ground plane in it. But now if I click on play, notice how that's going to spawn a person model. I'm going to click on the button to update crowd count. And when you do that, that's going to add those people to this surface. Now, what you can do is notice if you scroll down, this is basically using particles, but it's got attraction and avoidance. Well, I've got a sphere in here, right here. Well, in, inside of this group of people, right? If we click on the option for attraction collection, and we set it to attraction, which is where my sphere is, notice how these models are going to be attracted to whatever's in that attraction collection, which in this case is a sphere. Now, I'm gonna bring that attraction strength up as well as the attraction distance. But now, notice how if I move this around, those models are going to follow this sphere right here. And it's a little slow with the materials in here. It's a little bit faster if I just toggle into shaded mode. Um, but now you can kind of see what this is doing. You can use this in order to um, set a group of people following along or avoiding an object. So definitely very interesting possibilities for that one because you can actually make them follow whatever you want them to follow inside of your model. And so overall, I'm pretty happy with this new addition. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. I'm excited to get into it more. I can definitely talk about this more on the channel. If you want me to, just let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.